Testing one, two. So we'll do a quick sound check. Hopefully that's coming through. Yes, we've got sound. Beautiful. Excellent. All right, well. All right, let's start then after uh, three minutes of silence. Uh, sorry about that. Excellent. Okay, so just let me know how the the microphone goes tonight. Basically what I want to do tonight is um, I've, I've gone through the walk forward optimization. I've given you a bit of a look at that. But I'm going to just take a step back a little bit here and just lay the foundation for how all this comes together. So basically, uh, why do we test? Uh, how do we test? How do we back test? How do we do it well? Um, how do we not do it so well? How do we make sure that when we do it, we get really good results? Um, so it's really critical that when you're doing it, um, that you you basically do it in a way that is going to uh, to give you results that are consistent, because consistency is the key. And um, and we want to get results, like I mentioned before, we want to get results that basically, and let me just move that away, someone can't get in the room, so not a good time. Guys, can I just, uh, just if obviously you guys haven't got a problem with getting in the room, but if you can log in an hour before or the day before, just to make sure you can get in the room, because I don't control the Omnovia room, so if you can't get in, then basically uh, I can't send out messages like while I'm presenting. So um, I would suggest that if you have any problems in the future getting in, uh, you either don't worry about it because it'll be recorded or just have a couple of attempts. Uh, but yeah, so I don't handle the technical support on the Omnovia. So let's get back to uh, the training. I just thought I'd mention that. Um, so the key to the testing is that basically we need to make sure that that when we test, whatever we test up, so whether it's you know crude, the euro dollar, the pound, it doesn't really matter what it is that we test, that we're consistent with our testing. And we need to make sure, as we mentioned on on Monday and also on, on, uh, on last week's uh, session, we need to make sure that we don't over-optimize our strategy because uh, if we do that, we run the risk of putting something into the market that's too highly tuned, and it's only got to have a slight variation to the way it, uh, the parameters are set, or it has, you know, there's a slight change in the market conditions, and you know we're in a bit of trouble. So we need something that's fairly robust moving forward. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start putting in, I'm, I'm, I'm just putting together what what I believe we need to consistently be looking at as a group when we're doing our testing and our trading. So there's going to be a couple of new, um, uh, re not requirements, but a, a new gauges to what is a good system and what's not. I'm gonna introduce kind of a couple of new terms uh, probably on Monday, but let's have a look at the basics of it, okay? So this is laying the foundation for how we do it all. Now, many of you have already gone through this process and that's great. Some of you will continue to go through, will all continue to go through the process. So there's no point in, you know, it's always good to have a refresher and, and just build build a really good foundation because as we go forward, we're going to get better and better at this process as a group and individually. So it's what it's all about. And what'll, what the end result of that will be that will create better systems and strategies. Strategies that when we go live into the market, we're very confident they can perform at the level that we expect because there's no point spending a lot of time and wasting time developing out strategies if they're not robust in the market. So let, let's let have a look at basically auto backtesting task. So when when you get to you know going through your trend trader strategy or whatever strategy, whether momentum trend, counter trend, whatever system you cycle trader, you want to put together a basically a methodology for trading and a methodology for testing up your strategy. So what I've done here is I've said, right, well, it's auto back testing. We're going to look at crude here. We're going to look at the euro dollar and we're going to look at DAX. So we're going to probably look at three different markets as part of this case study. So the case study is uh, we're testing and I'm going to explain, explain the different ways we can test our strategies because it's not just, oh, look, we've got a, a strategy. We've got our strategy automation, we'll just optimize on that and we come up with some results, bang, we've got our system, then we'll have a look at days of the week, longs versus shorts, and we've got our high performance system. So we'll have a little, little bit more of a look at how that all plays out. Now, I've picked crude oil, 89 tick, 
uh, 10 point stop or 10 point is the value on the market. Uh, obviously, before we even get to this point here, so before we get to the back testing, you you definitely should have completed a market profile on the market you're trading. Why is it important to complete a market profile? Why do we need to do module seven of the Pro Trader program? Uh, anybody want to jump in and, and answer that one? We need to be familiar with the market. We need to be uh, we need to be aware of the idiosyncrasies of the market. We need to know about the uh, the specifics and specifications of the market, say that quickly. And that's important because we don't want to be a new trader going to the market. We say it all the time, you know, you, you'll hear me say it all the time. But remember too that good, good traders, really, really good traders do the same thing all the time. They'll do the same, they'll have a process that they monotonously go over all the time. Like the guys who do exceptionally well in the Pro Trader program are the ones who do things, uh, the, the really mundane journaling, you know, record keeping, managing their system, they do it constantly. They're always looking at, all right, well, I've got this system, how do I actually improve this system? Is it performing as it should do? Have I checked everything? Repetition, exactly. It's that cycle of repetition. You do that enough times, and you will you you know your market, you know your system, you know what's happening in your market, you know what's happening with the volatility. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that today, but that's what it's all about. If you pay very little attention to those components of your system, and you don't, if you get lazy or slack or busy, because busy is really an excuse. I mean, you the the thing to me is that if you want to be a professional trader, you've got to you've got to put the time and effort in. So it's 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 not you know it's not a case of oh look you know I, I didn't get around to it this week that's not good enough nowhere near good enough it's particularly if you're going to want to trade in a unit class you have to be on your game all the time and you know making comments like you know oh, I, did, I forgot to check something or you know oh, I had a big weekend you know that, that's nowhere near good enough so um, when we when we come to you know managing our system. I mean, this is just part of the process. This is part of the auto back testing process. But once we get what we call our, you know, high performance system, which is down here, you, we need to really, we need to really be all over that process and constantly be looking at it, refining it and improving it. So let's go through it. So basically, uh, the good results that we want, or the good strategy results, we want an average trade net profit of above 50 because the bigger that value is there the, the more fat we've got in the system so if it does have a r rough bumpy time where it flattens out or starts getting you know getting um, a few few consecutive losing trades or you know doesn't perform as well over a couple of weeks we can still stay in the game and we can st we're still making money so that's important Average uh, percentage win rate really need, even though you're trading in automation, let's not kid ourselves. Everybody wants to be winning, you know. Um, you shouldn't be riding the session by session bumps, ups and downs of, you know, your system. You should know exactly what your system is going to give you as far as performance. And you should be, you, you should be very aware of the consecutive winning and losing runs on your system. That should be very, very clear to you and you should have a very good understanding of that because the last thing you want to do is trade a strategy where you look at the net profit or the, the overall equity on the strategy and you think, oh, this is fantastic and you, you just gloss over the win rate. So you've got to match the system up with your style or your expectation. So if your expectation is that you or you know yourself well enough to know that you need a higher win rate, then you need to push that win rate up but you've got to manage the profit factor as well. So we need 1.5 or better. So we're wanting to get a, you know, a reasonably good reward to risk on all our, all our systems. We can, unless we're combining systems that have, one system might be like a capital growth system and one system might be a, and capital growth I mean a system that doesn't trade a lot, does, when it does trade, it, it, has, it might have small losers, but when it does trade, it has big winners, like it might be a, five ten to one on the reward to risk it but it, it, it might hold trades for you know a couple of days a week a fortnight whatever it is now that's that's what i call a capital growth strategy the high turnover strategy high repetition is intraday stuff stuff that's going to get your money management kicking over your delta you know get you increasing your lot sizes quickly so when you do get that capital growth 
trade, that big trade, uh, you know, it just really bumps your account up nicely. Now, best settings, when we do our initial test, so the first thing we do with our testing is we test up our system, and we're gonna go to the charts shortly. We test our system up to find the best settings that we can find for the markets. For crude example, we'll, we'll run, you know, a number of uh, periods of time during the day, find the best settings, and they'll, they'll be the best settings for our pot. That, that's what we call our pilot system. So we'll do a number of analysis. Now, we might, we've got a number of different stops we can test on. We can test on trailing stop, support resistance, and swing high or swing low. So we, our goal is to get the best settings here for our system, and that's our pilot. Now, once we've got that, that's the initial test, and that includes the time of the day. So we include our time of the day testing. So I'm just going to scroll down here for a second. Uh, so just stay with me. This is going to move quicker. So in our initial testing that we do, um, our initial testing, and, and this is this is something that uh, that this part of the spreadsheet here is what uh, what actually Damon sent through as far as consolidating his results, and I like the way he set it out. So I'm I'm of of going to uh, to just gloss this up a little bit and make it available to everyone because I like the way he's done this. Um, so what you're looking at, you do your initial testing and you might be testing, you know, over a 24 hour period, testing different times of the day. So you're looking at the number of trades, you know, the net profit, the profit factor, uh, the net profit on the long side, net profit on the short side, the average trade net profit on the longs, average trade net profit on the shorts, because when you're testing up, you really wanted to get a fair, fair idea of, you know, where the money's being made, don't you? And you want to see what, what the max short end is, obviously. Now, He's broken it down into, I like this, he's broken it down into like, you know, uh, 2 to 4, uh, 4 o'clock to 2,400, 6. So just finding out where where are the best times of the day. Now, there's a few ways you can obviously do the time of the day testing, but this is a good way of looking at, all right, here's my strategy. I'm going to just chunk this down here and find out where, where the most profitable because even if we run a continuous system, a system that trades pretty much all day looking for certain pattern setups or certain certain momentum setups, which I'm going to take you through today as well. Pro Trader Platinum system, and that is a momentum-based system that is hunting all day for setups, isn't it? It's looking for setups all day, so it's well, not going to really specifically narrow down a time of the day. So it's going to be slightly different to the way we've been trading, but it's not to say that we won't exclude times of day. So if, if we've got a momentum system and we're hunting for these certain patterns, certain pattern setups during the day what will be will there be times of the day where it's not profitable to trade that type of strategy like will there be times when you know you know we probably don't even need to do a test i mean we're going to do a test because that's how we that's how we trade uh, but definitely there will be times when it's not going to be profitable and you'll see it in your testing so even if we've got a even if we've got a dynamic strategy moving through the day, there are going to be times where it's lower probability setups, low, lower volatility, lower lower market action, lower price action. So we've got to be cognizant of that as well. Now, the other thing that he's done, which is good, is broken down times of the day. So once he's got his pilot system, he's worked out. Let's assume that um, of this cluster of trades of testing that Damon's done. This is the, well, not assuming, this is exactly what he's done. Uh, 2 to 2,400 was the best, was basically his best settings. So $14,703. Fantastic. So over a six-month period. Now, then what he's done is he's taken this lot of data and dropped it into here. So he's gone, right, well, every day, trading every day on, on the euro, US dollar, if I chunk that data down into my days of the week, what have I, what have I got then? So this is a very nice little look at all right so sunday through to friday we can see he's broken he's given his trade distribution down here and he's also looked at all right net profit per day so there's clearly uh tuesday and wednesday are not profitable days but if if we say well tuesday and wednesday are not profitable days then we're not really we're not seeing all of the picture there are we because if we then open it up and say the longs versus the shorts, we can see that, well, yeah, Tuesday is actually a pretty good day. So we're, we're in this situation, we're going to be trading, we're, we're more than likely going to be trading 
and we'll just give this color. We're going to be trading um, Sunday, Monday. On Tuesday, we're going to be trading the short side. Then on then on Thursday, Friday, we're going to be trading longs and shorts. So that's really the that's the uh, the matrix of our kind of trading strategy, isn't it? Monday, Tuesday, uh, Sunday, Monday, uh, Tuesday short. So that's where we're at. And we need to keep an eye on that because what we're looking for is we're looking for uh, we're looking to track the average trade net profit and make sure that's high. The higher, the better. Uh, there's some here that you may you may decide not to trade, but you know they're they're, they're they if you turn those off, and this is what you've got to be a little bit careful of. If you turn off a day of the week, you've got to see how it affects the overall strategy. Because while it may be not as profitable, it may actually be helping you overall with your strategy performance uh, based on the dynamics of the system. So then we've got a little bit of a conclusion here. You can see there is, is uh, Damon's done a good job. He's six months of data. We can see that Tuesday and Wednesday are not very profitable. However, from our analysis, we know that the, uh, the short side is definitely one that we would consider trading. Also looking, at, he's done some breakdown here on his times of the day work, which is really good. Um, so his conclusion from this testing, because remember that if you've gone through module three and you've looked at the one uh, one page objective assessment, what's what's the process there we go through? We basically have an idea or a concept, we objectively test it, then we we basically determine whether it. it it is actually in line with what our initial belief was because remember we've got a belief about the market so we've got to test that and be objective and then we come to a conclusion so it's like being back in year eight uh, year eight science where you're going through that whole a methodology conclusion um, so your findings end up being a certain certain uh, certain requirement for you to go forward and that means that Without any shadow of a doubt, you've you've objectively tested that. Now, so that that is traditionally that's well, that's the process we go through at the moment. That's basically the process. Uh, he's added some additional filters in here, which I like, which are basically they're they're specific to the currencies. You've got uh, results from optimizing, uh, which he ended up coming out with about fifteen thousand nine hundred fifteen dollars. So that's fantastic. Uh, drawdown was twelve ninety. So Big improvement, which is great, and taking out those days of the week that weren't performing. Bank holidays, uh, bank holiday analysis proved to be uh, proved to be basically uh, still profitable. So trading the bank holidays was still profitable. I would I would say that you want to what if you if you if you make an assessment on non-farm payrolls or bank holidays. What should you probably do going forward in real time with those two things there? If you're tracking and trading bank holidays and non-farm payrolls, what are the two key things you want to do there, particularly on the currencies? And on any time, any session where you're trading like a high volatility, um, what, are the, what are the two things that you're potentially going to be susceptible to for those spread and slippage? Yeah. So you've got to definitely watch that because even though your testing may come up and say, oh, look, you know, it looks really good, non-farm payrolls, um, your results may not be may not be as great in real time as you are testing. So because what, obviously once the spread goes out on, on that Friday, then, you know, you can be taken out and your strategy may not be. So they're two things I would, I would watch. The other thing I was going to mention too was that um, that and this is we're going to fast track this as well because um, I mentioned this last Wednesday, but well sorry Monday. This key level analysis has been excellent, and I did talk about that last week, so I'm not going to go through that again. But you can see there that key level the key level analysis where he's done he's he's taken two bricks, three bricks, and four bricks towards a key level whether he takes the trade or not. Well this is assuming he takes the trade. Then it's that's that's shown that the net result on that has been negative as well. So we definitely want to be watching these these key level well we want to be coding these key level setups into our strategy to make sure that we've got the option to turn those off. So once you get that into your strategy as an upgrade 
I would definitely be going through and testing your entire strategies on the key level because that will make an I, th I believe that will make a big difference in your trading, particularly on markets like crude. I'm, I mentioned that last week. So um, so that's what I wanted to cover there. Now, what I want to do is I just want to pop back up here and I want to take you through the different, the different ways in which we can uh, look at the testing. So there's a number of ways we can do this testing. We can basically do what we've just done then. We can say, right, pilot system, we get our best settings, then we go to... Once we've got those best settings, then we we look at the days of the week, which we've just done, and we say, right, days of the week, what are the best days of the week? We went through that process. Longs versus shorts, surely there must be an advantage there. Yes, and then we come up with our high-performance system. So once we've got that, basically we've got our high-performance system, and then what we're doing is we're really tracking our high-performance system based on 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 performance so it's based on the performance and the days of the week we continue to track the days of the week so if we go back down here once we've got our high performance system this information here becomes critical doesn't it this information becomes critical because this tells us based on our best settings what is working what is on and what is off so so these numbers here become vital to us uh, you could max drawdown longs, max drawdown shorts. You could ha you could you can put in here which we, we've got on the um, system performance track of the current drawdown. So you could add the current drawdown here. So as you track this on a weekly basis, this becomes when you do this as your first first test up to get your high performance system because that's what you're creating here a high performance system. This becomes a weekly task, doesn't it? Why does this become a weekly test task, this process here? Why do we have to keep doing this process of, of looking at this data? So so we can, in here we can have, uh, we can basically have on or off. So our system is either on or off based on robustness yet, yeah, watching the drawdowns, all, all great answers. So let's go through them. You've got Eddie says robustness, yep, we want to make sure that the system's still tracking properly. If we have to turn something on, we have, I mean, once we have our high performance system, we need to we need to put that data together, which which uh, we've got here, our drawdown. So our drawdown based on this this weekly task, our high put this is our high performance system. That high performance system now has a drawdown, has a net profit. So the net profit is 1500 I won't type it in again. But the net profit is 15, uh, $15,915. The drawdown is 1290 So where is our drawdown for this overall system going to sit? Where's our, where would our, our circuit breaker, our, our point at which we turn this system off be? If our, if our max drawdown is 1290 what would we be prepared to take for this system? So Kim 1500, 1K. You, you try, you're trying to find, you're really trying to, you, what, what, with the max drawdown, you're trying to, you're looking at the, the overall drawdown and you're, you're basically determining uh, what, and I'm gonna show Brett's spreadsheet uh, short or a little bit later on here, but you're trying to find a point at where the system is starting to trade outside its uh, outside its it's basically its range as far as drawdown. So if it's if it's average drawdown is say I've mentioned this before a thousand dollars and you've got a twelve ninety, well then you might sitting it sitting it just below that. Yeah, so you you're might you've got You've got obviously you, you may have a couple of um, you may have a c couple of trades that are uh, that are you know a fairly fairly uh, big losing trade so that might uh, might throw your stats out but let's assume that you've got an average trade net loss of around 150 200 dollars so that that's not going to kind of factor into your distribution of losses is it so if our if our distribution is is consistent as far as our strategy as the automation is 
then we shouldn't have those large outliers. So basically, if we work on that even distribution of drawdown, the 1290 might be the, the drawdown that we're, you know, we're prepared to take. So we want to sit it, you know, if, if our average drawdown is around about 1200, we might sit it at, say, 1300, 1350, like Kim said, and say, right, well, that will keep us into the strategy nicely. So that will make sure that we're not getting, we're not turning things on and off too frequently. So if we go back to our system and we say, right, well, uh, that's our high performance system. So what we're trying to do is we're always trying to go with our best settings, aren't we? We're trying to make sure that we're, we're trading with the strongest days of the week and, uh, and the strongest, uh, strongest kind of approach to the market as far as that. However, there's a number of different things we can look at when we look at uh, testing our system and going forward. That's one, one process or way of doing it. The other, what, the other thing we can do is we can look at, we can look at things that are, more, are going to affect our system more dynamically. So we can say, right, well, we, we might have our best settings that we've come up with. Our, you know, we're fairly com comfortable and com competent with our settings and we feel that they're going to be robust in the market. So what we then can do is we can say, well, there's certain things that are going to affect our trading as far as performance. These things will be things like seasonal data, potentially, uh, the, di the directional bias, long versus short, particularly if we're trading a higher time frame on the uh, intraday an intraday high time frame and volatility. So if we go to our chart now, and what I've done here is I've just gridded out for you crude oil, and these are these are the these are and I'm going to explain this here in a minute. These are the filters for for crude oil based on seasonal data, daily directional, and volatility. So what I've done here is I've said right, well, on a, from a seasonal point of view, uh, historically over a 30 year period. Crude typically January starts off long, ends up short. In February it continues to have a short cycle. March and April are long cycles. May's long, short is midway through May into June. Then we get a bit of a long cycle from July all the way through to September, or middle of October, and then the shorts kick in. So then I basically looked at this year's data and I thought, well, what would happen if we applied the daily directional? I'll explain that in a minute. And you can see here that sometimes these these things match up. Like you've got longs, short, long. This is where there's a discrepancy. There's a, a partial match up here. You can see we get a partial match here. So you can see that at times the seasonal and the directional, which is the current market condition or the current move on the market, match up. Now the other, the third component of the the things that I was looking at was volatility. So what we have here is we have volatility, we have either using that volatility stochastic because we need an objective measure of anything that we do. We've got falling volatility uh, in January on crude. We've got extremely low, low rising, low, 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 low volatility, and I'll explain the parameters for low, medium, and high. Uh, July was high and rising, August high. So we could, looking at this information here, what we could effectively do is, and this is, I'll explain the three different types of testing we're going to do in this case study. So the first, there's actually four. The first bit of testing we're going to do in the case study is we're going to test our typical setup. So our typical pilot system and track the days of the week based on performance. That's our first case study that we're going to run, option one. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to go, we're going to develop up our pilot system and we're going to come up with a robust, uh, profitable strategy that has, has a positive performance. And then all we're going to do with that strategy is we're going to run the daily directional filter. So let's go to the charts because we need to see this because it's all well and good to talk about it, but let's have a look at it. So this, this chart here maps out exact, the, the different ways you can test you, uh, apply a filter to your overall performance so or your strategy. So the top the top section of the chart is daily directional. The bottom is our seasonal. So what I've done is I've for daily directional I've picked a fairly fairly um, basic setup for daily directional. I've got the moving GMT moving average on there. 
My requirement for the daily directional is if I get two closes above the moving average, I'm long. Two closes below, I'm short. Very, very simple. Everybody, everybody should be uh, able to uh, able to follow me on that one. That's a, that's a nice, easy one. Simplest, simple is always best. So what we've got here is we've got uh, obviously we've got a, a, a little short here just in the end of December. January we come up and we've got a long here. Then we close two below, so we're short here in this period here, middle of January to February. Then March we're long, so we're well above. Then interestingly in April we fall below and we're short for the entire April through to middle of July. So a nice short bias there on the on the daily directional. This is only the daily directional. Then we get long again, and now we're short again on the daily directional. So that that's the daily directional. Now the next thing we're going to look at is the seasonals. Now the seasonal is courtesy of our our friend on seasonalcharts.com, um, and we're using that that 30 either 16 or 30 year seasonal data for for the markets that you're looking at. So what you're looking at is that that directional bias, seasonal directional bias for, and we're looking at it crude at the moment. So the seasonal bias is that uh, we've got longs here in December, January, then we get short in Feb, then in March, April, and May we're long. So you can see there if we apply a seasonal bias here, we're going against what's actually happening in the market in real time. So if we blindly if we come up with a pilot system and we say, right, well, I've got my pilot system, I'm basically only going to trade my settings based on long and short bias on the seasonal. So that's what we're going to actually test up. We're actually going to test this concept up. So we're going to, we're going to see which is the most effective and the, and the most profitable uh, testing concept as far as as far as far our intraday strategy. So then we could say, right, well, you can see here that that obviously as we get further along the line in July, August, September, we get a rise in in, uh, in price and we get long and that matches the seasonal and the daily directional line up nicely. But what's interesting here too is that, so every does everybody see what we're doing here? We've got the daily directional stuff on the top, the seasonal stuff on the bottom, and I'm going to talk about the volatility now. So is everybody following along, or do you want me to just do a quick recap of that? Um, it made sense when I did it, but I just wanted to make sure that it's clear to everyone in the room. Excellent, good stuff. All right, so we've been over this a few times. So uh, the good thing is that it's not, it shouldn't be new to most of us, so that's good. Now, what we've got is we've got a standard volatility stochastic here, which we've got a... Um, well, the seasonal, let me, uh, good question, Sean, good question. What the seasonal is doing is the seasonal is basically, we're getting our seasonal data from seasonalcharts.com. So crude oil, this is a 24 hour, 20, seasonal 24 years. So it's basically taking the seasonal data over a 24 year and what is the, uh, let me get that, you can't see that, let me just pull that up. We're basically using the seasonal chart to say, right, well, over the last 24 years, what has historically happened on crude oil every year for the last 24 years? And over the last 24 years, this has historically been what's happened on crude oil. So we apply that to the market. Now, that the trouble with, or not the trouble, but the, the issue with that is, is that you've got its seasonal data and it's historic. So um, it's like looking at implied volatility and historic volatility. You know, the uh, historic volatility is good to look at, but it's not giving you basically what's the here and now. So you, you, this implied volatility is the stuff, and this seasonal data is what we want to look at now. We want to say, right, well, we've got seasonal data, we're looking at it at the moment, but we also need to see exactly what's happening on the chart. Yeah, so so what you're doing is you, it's really the seasonal stuff is is just getting really an idea of what potentially has happened in the past. It's exactly like, it's exactly what you're doing, you know, it's exactly what you're doing in your back testing. You're, you're optimizing your strategy based on historical data. So all you're trying to do is you're trying to get as much, as much information as you can in to make an objective assessment. And this, all we're doing really, 
as part of this exercise is we're going to we're going to come up with the best strategy for as a group going forward the number one strategy for uh, for our process of of testing. Now, you you I think you're going to be surprised about what the results are going to be, but. What and what you'll find is that not everybody is going to want to do the same. Not everybody's going to want to test the same, or not everybody's going to want to follow the same process. You know, you, you some of the results may come out slightly better than others, but you might find that you've got an affinity with one of the the ways in which we're testing. So this this what I'm doing is I'm laying out all the possible scenarios that we can do with our testing, and then we're going to pick the one that's most appropriate for. You know, and this is what's going to be available to you, you when we go forward, and we, you know, we finalise our our um, our website. These this information is going to be at your fingertips, so you'll be able to look at it and say, "Oh, right, well, we've been through this process before. We know exactly how that works, and uh, you know, this is what I like. This is my preference as a trader." So let's go back to the uh, let's go back to the charts. My apologies. So the third part, the third filter that we can use for our testing, once we get our pilot system, the third filter we can use is, is basically a volatility filter. So that volatility filter um, is, it has high, medium and low. So high, medium and low, basically volatility. And it also has rising and falling volatility. So this volatility is stochastic can de will determine exactly how we're going to, what conditions the markets are in. Now it's a lagging indicator, so you've got to remember that as well. But what it allows you to do is it allows you to potentially design your system. It, it does two things, basically, you've got, coming back to your robust or your pilot system, you've got your pilot settings. So what you may find is that with your pilot system, that during the falling market, you have to make certain changes to your system during falling volatility. During very low volatility, that might be a time where you turn, there might be a, when you apply the, when you look at your, your pilot system results over the, you know, 200, 300, 500 trades, say you've tested up 500 trades here on your pilot system, and you look at this period here with a very, very low volatility, like we've done before, and you say, right, well, when I actually objectively look at this period of low volatility, every time it gets below, say, 10, and I look at all the, all the dates, because I can, I can date stamp this here, when, when this thing falls below 10 on this, here on the, uh, on the 30th, of, um, 30th of January, and you know, up until mid-March, mid all those trades that occurred there, none of them made money. So it tells me that this period here of low volatility out of the trades I took were, were not profitable. So that's what we're looking to gauge. We're looking to gauge, right, well, using our pilot system, is there an opportunity to turn some of those days of the, you know, those, those periods off? Can we turn the system off at that time with low volatility? Um, when we get to a period here where we've got uh, rising volatility, how's our system going? How's our pilot system going? Rising volatility, is it is is it that we need to you know do we need to adjust our pilot system? So this pilot system, with your testing on the pilot system, with the volatility, you would be looking at high, medium, and low volatility to see how that impacts on your trading. You would also be looking at all right, well during these periods, do I need to change my settings slightly to get better results? So. We talk about walk forward optimization, and you know, basically looking at the last uh, four months of data, then testing that 30%. Well, you're basically doing the same here with this volatility. You're saying, right, well, um, we say, right, well, when we've got falling volatility, our pilot system makes money, but can we improve the pilot system or modify the settings? So we've actually got different settings for different periods of volatility rising and falling and this is the work that uh, that Dave Murphy has done and we're going to use as a case study so they're the three things so if we go back to our just to, to kind of bring it all together because we, we want to kind of consolidate all this 
So let's go back and put this in, in the framework that we want. And we'll just switch over to, we'll just go back to the testing here. So back to our testing. So the first the first thing we're going to do with our case study is we're going to basically, we're going to test as we normally test. Pilot, days of the week, longs versus shorts, high performance. Everybody's comfortable with that. Everybody's familiar with that. Then we're going to test the pilot system based on daily directional filter and come up with a high performance system. So just use that daily directional filter. That's it. And we'll see how that goes. Then what we're going to do is we're going to test option uh, three will be testing the volatility filter, the pilot system based on a volatility filter that provides us with different settings or different uh, or an on-off switch for our system. So it basically tells us whether we should be trading, whether we shouldn't be trading, uh, what our settings should be. So it's like a walk forward optimizer, but it's based on volatility. Then our fourth case study. Now the interesting thing is here that our systems work based on this concept so it's going to be interesting to see how much of an improvement or whether there is an improvement based on these other concepts so that the the next one obviously we'll be testing will be the seasonal so pilot system initial testing applying the seasonal filter so we, we we're trading every day of the week all we're doing is we're saying right well when we're long when the seasonal filter says longs only we don't take any short trades we trade every single day of the week, but we don't take any short trades. So we're not we're not doing any of the days of the week longs versus shorts. We're just applying that middle thing as the filter, the seasonal filter. Then the final bit of testing we're going to do is, or the the, the last yeah the final one is the pilot system and doing the walk forward analysis. So the stuff that I spoke to you about last week, when we said right well. We've got our system now. Let's walk forward this, and then, as we, as you remember from the uh, from the the session, we basically what we did was we said, right, well, we've got, we pick out our settings, and then those settings are applied into the market in real time for that next, you know, that next thirty percent of time that we're testing, and then they become our best settings moving forward. So very similar to the volatility type testing, and then then what we do is once we've apply those in the market the walk forward an analysis will tell us exactly when we should be re analyzing our data so it might give us a you know a 13 day window it might give us a 20 day window it might give us a 50 day window but at some point in the future it'll it'll dictate when your data should be uh, re-optimized and then that re-optimizing then takes into consideration the previous four months so what we're going to be doing and then that that becomes our high performance system and then we do it again there will be a setting that that sets up to do it again so you can see here that we've got we've got a number of ways in which we can test this system moving forward or test out uh, project our case study and you may find that you may find that these th this concept of all these different testing methods there will be some people who you know prefer a specific method over and above another so um, there's no right or wrong what we're doing is we're just objectively testing to make sure that because I've already done the tests and uh, you'll be surprised to see what the results are going to be as far as the uh, the DAX and crude and um, it'll be interesting to see how how it plays out and where people are thinking that the money is going to be made so who will just as a bit of an exercise just as a bit of bit of fun what of the of the testing samples that we're going to be running here what I'll just get you to either email I'll get you to email me and tell me what camp you think you would like to sit in as far as the testing now I'm, I'm going to be running the testing obviously but um, I'm happy for you know I'm happy for people to, to be participating but what I want you to do is I want you to either shoot me a quick email or a Skype message and say look Shane of the of the different concepts or the different types of testing we can do, so we've we've got the the traditional you know day of the week long versus shorts. We've got the seasonal, directional volatility, and the walk forward analysis. Let's just let's just see exactly where um, where most of us think the the best results are going to come.
Any, does anybody want to take a, well, obviously I'd like you all to uh, to have a little projection as to where you think the, uh, which is going to rank the highest. Because it's always surprising in, in exercises like this, because remember it brings into into play our beliefs about what's going to work, what's not going to work. So beliefs, expectations, so it's all our biases, so it's always an interesting. And many a time I've gone through this process thinking that, uh, you know, just with the standard testing, thinking that, you know, I've got something that I, I want to basically apply to the market because I know that um, it's going to, going to improve the results and it doesn't, doesn't improve it at all. So the objective assessment is the absolute only way to go forward when you're doing this, uh, this type of stuff. Well, it's, it's a 30-year cycle, uh, but it's basically based on a monthly, on monthly seasonal. So it's looking at the 30-year results of monthly seasonal data. Yeah, so over a 30-year period, it said, right, well, 30 years of data on this market, this is exactly what's been happening month by month. Um, but look, any, any, anything you, any, you know, additional things you want to add in there, definitely put them forward because it's only going to help the group as we go forward. So, uh, so it's going to be an interesting exercise. As I said, it's, um, it, it'll, it'll be a, it'll be an interesting exercise in the fact that, uh, that you'll find that different people will, will definitely have, uh, have expectations that one thing's going to work over another, but the great thing is that some of these strategies don't require, like once you've got your pilot system, um, if you decide to just trade the seasonals, for example, then there's not really a lot. Once you've got your settings and they're fairly robust, there's not really a lot of work. You're just basically managing the seasonal bias. That's it. So that's a very, very simple process. Um, obviously, a lot more work in the in the volatility-based stuff and the wolf Ford analysis. But what I want to do as well now, that's setting up the case study. So that's what we're going to be doing. And we'll go through in detail. I've already started mapping out crude for you. So crude's already kind of done. Uh, but we'll start putting the stats together for crude. I'll come up with the, uh, the settings for the best, uh, the best times of the day and, and days of the week. And then we'll map that out. And then we'll do the DAX and the Euro dollar. So we're going to do three, three case studies. The DAX, the Euro dollar, Euro US dollar and crude oil. Now, before we, before we finish up tonight, what I want to do is show you, uh, I want to show you this momentum uh, platinum system for a second here, because what's interesting is that uh, what we're going to do, I'm going to ask Mike to do a bit of a fast track on this because I really like the way this is, uh, this is, this is panning out as far as results and performance. One one of the things that we've got at the moment is, and we've had a conversation a few times with some of the guys in the in the room uh, this week. For those of you who are trading the say say for example you're trading the the crude crude system and you you know you've got crude system number. If you if we go into crude SNO3, you've got this true false concept here for the trailing stop. What I would like everybody to do is turn this to true. So turn that NP trail to true, because there seems to be a uh, some type of, particularly if you're on 9.1, uh, you should definitely have this at true true, because it's not there's something that, that's not getting picked up properly on this uh, this false TP, so the old TP. So I would highly recommend that you change that. I mean the better the results are better anyway. But that's one thing I wanted to mention. So if you've got any strategy that has that false TP, I want you to turn that to true if you can. And the other thing I want you, I would like you to do is I'm going to send out, I'm going to get Mike to send out this Bollinger Band, MACD Bollinger Band, because this does a really, really nice job of, we're going to get this coded into our systems, of basically getting you out of a trade when uh, the market is basically starting to uh, to lose its momentum. So I'll just show you what I've got here and I'll show you the settings I've got. You, you, you've got to make sure you've got the right settings on it as well because 
if you if you don't have the right settings on it, you uh, you can get taken out uh, way too early. But what's what's happening nicely here is let's we'll use this as an example. Um, what's happening nicely is that. This is this is getting a, a good chunk of the move. Not all the move. I mean, you're never going to get all the move, are you? So let me. Sorry, Steve. I switched over and didn't show the chart. Um, let me just switch this over now. So I'll go to. I'll actually go to the monitor view. Okay, so we've got our MACD Bollinger Band set up here. Now, the settings I've got are 24, 52, 30, 22, and 2, negative 2. The reason why I've got that set up, and I'm going to get Mike to, uh, to put this into the strategies, is that this 1, 2, and 3 dot, uh, what, what I'm looking at is that I'm looking for a exit on any move on the trend trade at once or obviously we're going to be using a different strategy here but on our current systems using the trend trader like with crude for example uh, this this is getting us out a lot better on much better prices and, and much better uh, uh, profit than basically just exiting on the trailing stop so I'm going to I'm going to show you some uh, we're going to do some testing on this as far as the auto trading but basically this is going to have a one two and a three dot option for you to exit the trade so basically when you when you get this this move set up and you you lose the uh, you lose this then basically you wanting to get out now um, this one here obviously doesn't give as much but there are some trades where you'll find that you, you're giving just a little bit too much back on the um, on the retracement, whereas you could be taking a lot more profit out on that initial run down, and then potentially using this pullback area as an opportunity to get back in. So adding an, an additional strategy there. So I'm just going to add this in as a uh, as an indicator and add it into the automation because I think it um, yeah. Basically, you're exiting. Well, well, what you're doing is you're you're taking profit when you lose the uh, the red dots. So once you once you lose those red dots and you get that that uh, bullish momentum. Now, what I've also got is I've got a volume a volume divergence indicator. So I can apply that as well to the strategies, and you can have a like a double input. So once you start getting that volume divergence, so the sellers are, are losing their uh, their momentum to the short side based on volume then and you get this uh, the confirmation on the Bollinger Bands you want to be locking in some profit there so it will definitely on on from my testing it's showing some really good uh, really good profit locking in some really good profit obviously you know you, you're taking you're not holding out for the bigger move but uh, you're locking in a lot of good nice profit and still the reward to risk is very good um, but I'll probably spend a little bit more time on Monday going through some more detail on the on this strategy here, which is the uh, the Platinum Pro. It's uh, it's running nicely, and um, and as I mentioned, it's more of a dynamic system. So you'll find it's um, it's really nice to uh, to track and trade uh, because of the dynamic nature of it. It's running. It's looking for setups pretty much for the whole day. So you, you'd, you'd have an exclusion zone of the lunch hour or, you know, the time of the day, or you might exclude the early session and the DAX like the, the first hour, so from 8 to 9 o'clock because of that volatility and because of the gap. You've got to remember you've got a gap there and you've got indicators that are running through a market that's been closed and then is gapping open. So there's certain markets, but I'll, I'll basically put detail about that when we uh, release the system and, uh, and you can track that. But it's um, yeah, it's running nicely. So no, Sean, I'm like for here for example, I'm always looking for reentries on the short. If I've got if I've got the momentum with me, I'm looking for a reentry here. 
So every time this market pulls back, I'm looking to get back in. Um, but I need to confirm the re-entry on the... I mentioned on Monday that I'm really only looking to confirm the entry on the smaller Bollinger Band, not the larger one, because the larger Bollinger Band is too slow. With the re-entries, you want to be in and dynamic. Get this run, stop run here, and it'll take a lot of stops out. I'll push through, uh, say, the resistance area, but that's really just a... Uh, you know, just cleaning a few people out and then you'll see that once you get that turn it'll trade back through this resistance area I can probably show you some examples and they're really nice trades to get back in on that re-entry type trade they're just uh, just nice little setups where you've had a good run down there's a uh, everyone's getting aggressive on the short side with their stops and then they get a little bit too aggressive then a, a buying thrust comes in pushes everybody out and then the market's got nothing left on the buy side and it just uh, it just sells off again. So this indicator does a really nice job of picking that up. Uh, the larger one is the top one. See how, see the larger one. So what I'd be looking for is I don't want to, I pretty much don't want to get in here. I want to be in, I want to be in when it turns red, but when it's broken, either turns red, it won't, it won't turn red unless it's actually, uh, if it's broken through here, you won't get any selling option. But one, the one, trades that I like is when it breaks through and then it's coming up against these uh, these momentum lines and then it just breaks back down again and, and then you're looking to go short. So um, that'll be part of the coding that we do on it anyway. But it's it's also running nicely, which is good on the euro dollar. So on the five minute euro dollar, I mentioned that on on Monday, it's doing a really good job of picking up some trades here on the euro dollar on this five minute. Just, yeah, do, slightly different setting I would have on this because I'd be more looking to use um, the yellow momentum line as my trailing stop to give it more room. But it's picking up some beautiful trades and, uh, you know, you're getting the crosses and the longs are going. So, it's just uh, just working beautifully. So looking forward to getting that one out for people to have a look at as well. So guys, that's going to wrap it up for me for tonight. Uh, we're obviously going to be interesting to see the case study unfold. Um, as I mentioned before, you know, part of the process is making sure that you're picking, you know, the, the, the right system for you, the, the, the right way in which you want to go about managing your system, the most comfortable way, the one that's going to give you, you know, that suit your style, how you want to trade. So it's it's very much, you know, customising how you want to go forward with your strategy because um, there's no perfect way. It's, it's a matter of just making sure that you're trading a high-performance system and you're really working towards uh, maintaining that high-performance systems. Well, yes, you see, some, some markets you trade, you, you, you'll you find that the, the settings will only last for probably three or four months, and then you've got to, you've got to either not change the settings, but you might find that, um, yeah, you might have to change the settings, or you might have to drop one of the days you're trading, or a couple of the days you're trading, uh, based on the, you know, based on what's happening on the daily chart. You know what's happening if your if your system is predominantly trading the long side, and then suddenly there's a massive sell-off. Then it's really you're going to have to change the settings. So that's why that's why I always say, Kim, that your best weapon is to load up your daily chart and be tracking that as well, because that gives you a little bit of insight as to, as to what's happening in the dynamics of the market. Um, but some of the systems, like we haven't really haven't changed some of the systems for like a year and a half. So. There are some systems that some of the guys are trading that haven't really changed at all. So sometimes you get you know really good, you some really good settings like, and sometimes you know like with it. Well, with the DAX market, depends on the market as well. With the DAX, um, you've definitely got to be on top of that. That's one thing that re requires a lot of work. With the Euro dot, with this new strategy though, it's going to be more dynamic. So it's looking for setups. It's not really. Uh, pinpointing a time of the day it's actually just trolling the market looking for these setups with momentum that's it so it'll be it should be more of a fluid system and it should should be you know a, 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 a give you a lot more opportunity so more dynamic more flexible and the other thing too is with the system is that 
I would say that you'll you'll be taking the you'll be using the system based on your circuit breaker. So you'll be having a max profit circuit breaker or a max loss circuit breaker. So you would be running it for say the open hour of the morning or the afternoon session and just trading until you hit your circuit breaker for the day. So it's a different and, and what I mean by that is basically I'll just go in and quickly show you the strategy. This is where this is where this system is going to be more more played out, which is basically or probably not your max wins, max losses, but your in, in your strategy settings. So if you go to if you right click on your chart and you go into your format strategy, you, you've got your trend trader. So when you go into your trend trader, if you're trading a more of a dynamic system, you're going to want to put some put some uh, some either targets in or you're going to want to put some circuit breakers in here because remember you know a lot of the guys in the room are trading uh, trading towards you know managing a unit class so they're going to want to control the risk every day that they trade that's one of the critical things about the program now if you don't have a circuit breaker in there on your risk then uh, then it'll take as many trades as it wants so this this dollar circuit breaker or max trade circuit breaker is a really good feature because, however, you've got to be a little bit careful, and I've mentioned this before, you don't want to tr set this to true here and say, right, well, all right, if I get two winners, I'm done. If I get three losers, I'm done. Because you might get three losing trades that are 10 points each. They might be a one-point one stop out or a five-point stop out, and then you might miss... Or you might get three lose small losers and then you miss a two thousand dollar winner. You know that's that's a bit of pill to swallow. So you probably want to set it up so you've got a dollar value that you're prepared to risk based on your portfolio, because your portfolio is got obviously going to have a a uh, a dollar amount that you're risking as part of your daily risk. So keeping in line with that concept, uh, your system would you'd be wanting to do your system testing based on this and then that way you can have a max loss of say $400 for that, whatever the amount is. But you would leave this profit, you want to keep the profit maybe open because if your system's getting a really good running day where it's got to have five, six, seven trades through the whole day because it's not like trading that 10 minute time slot. It's trading the entire day where it's just ebb and flowing beautifully and you know, things are clicking for your system, it's running nicely. Uh, because this momentum strategy is exactly that. It's not going to take trades against, it's not going to take setups where it's against the main trend. So for example, if we go back into the DAX, uh, you're not going to get, you're not going to get to take a long setup if the market's not giving you that, those long, those long parameters to take. So you're not going to get these small crappy trades that don't go anywhere and, and you know just basically knock you out. Um, your your requirements for the setups are based on momentum and energy in the market. There's got to be that energy there for you to take the trade. If you haven't got the energy in the market, then you're not going to. We can do that because that's part of the um, that's part of the uh, money management, Sean. So um, uh, we can do that as part of the part of the flow on from the money management module seven. Uh, that's a good suggestion, actually. I'll, I'll add that in because it's um, everybody knows. You know, all the guys who have been through the money management know that you know we're we're managing our our drawdown based on a multiple of risk, so the R multiple. So that cumulative drawdown of your R multiple is a good way of tracking it through the day as well. So that's uh, that's a good good idea. Excellent. Yeah, keep keep those coming. Uh, good one. All right, so uh, I'll just make a note of that. Um, any other questions before we go? The, the, other, the point there that, that Sean has made about the R multiple, that is a really good way of managing your system. Like rather than looking at the dollar amount, um, it's, it's, it's a good way of managing. And for those of you who went through the uh, module seven, we were really looking at the system as, as an R multiple. And, and if you look at the system performance tracker, we've got the R multiple built in there, haven't we? We've got that as part of our requirement. So we need to kind of, you know, develop that up a little bit more and, and be using that 
because it's a really good way of saying, right, well, you know, our system's going to turn off at, you know, um, yeah, exactly. It helps move away from the, the psychology. Oh, I think it's fantastic because we, we don't want to, th- we're not thinking about, all right, guys, we're, um, we're going to wrap it up there. So thank you for your time and we'll, I'll, I'll make sure hopefully everybody saw that recording. Just one thing, if you if you are watching the videos, which hopefully you all are, uh, because they take about two hours to render up, so there, there's a bit of time in uploading them. So the guys who do the tech support are doing a great job there. Um, can you please, when, when we send the video out, just hit the, if you can, hit the like button on the video so we're getting some good feedback on the videos. So that way we'll continue to do them. Uh, because if you know if, if we know that you know everybody is enjoying watching the the replays or the session being recorded, then at least we can continue to to record that. Because as I said, it, it's about a two-hour job all up to to the, to the whole process. So if we get uh, if if everyone's happy to keep watching them, is everybody is it, does everybody want to to want to have the sessions recorded? So we'll just do it would be okay, traders. Thanks for your time. If you did enjoy the video, please feel free to uh, just click on the like button below the YouTube video and that'll help us to uh, to keep posting these videos up on YouTube because we'll be getting some feedback, which is great. And uh, also, if you'd like to become a GMT Pro Trader, please email info at gmtfutures.com for more information. You can also visit our website at www.gmtfutures.com. So thank you for your time. Have a great day and uh, I'll catch you on the next video update. Cheers.